We've got a loaded slate of Steelers news and rumors to cover right here on Steelers Talk. First up, we're going to talk about a report saying that the Denver Broncos may still be open to trading Cortland Sutton this offseason. Could the Pittsburgh Steelers be going out and getting their legit number two wide receiver? We'll talk about that first up. Then we'll get into Justin Fields here, where an NFL analyst says that Fields will be the starting quarterback for the Pittsburgh Steelers week one of the 2024 season. I'll share my thoughts on that report. And then there's another report that says the Steelers view Dante Jackson as a quote-unquote hidden gem. I'll let you guys know uh, what he's done in the past and what the Steelers may be seeing in Dante Jackson's game. And then finally on today's show, we'll talk about a rumor about who the Pittsburgh Steelers could be playing week one of their 2024 schedule. Of course, the official release of the NFL schedule is Wednesday evening. I believe it's 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So we're going to be doing a reaction video to that. Once that schedule is officially out or when there's a leak, whatever, we're going to be going, uh, getting you guys a video, uh, putting it up here on the channel Wednesday night. So Make sure you guys subscribe to the channel for our reaction video for the official 2024 schedule for your Pittsburgh Steelers. And because Wednesday's schedule for at least me, I'm going to be getting in a little bit later on Wednesday, uh, we're not going to be doing live on our normal live day on Wednesday. We're going to move Steelers Talk Live from Wednesday to Thursday. That way we can go through the whole schedule. I can give my official record prediction, all these great things on Thursday. So for all the people that like to tune in to our live shows, we're going to be moving it from Wednesday to Thursday at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So without further ado here, let's get to our top story today, which Broncos reporter Chris Tomasson says that the Corland Sutton trade could still be possible, uh, and that's definitely good news for the Pittsburgh Steelers fans out there that still want to add a legit number two wide receiver to this room. This is what Tomasson had to say. It, re it remains to be seen what will happen with Sutton, who has just $2 million of his $13 million contract guaranteed for 2024, and he could be a candidate to be traded. But there's little question the Broncos have improved their receiving core since Sutton took the social took to social media on March 9th. So listen, guys, I do think because the Broncos were able to land Troy Franklin, because they were able to sign Josh Reynolds in free agency, because Tim Patrick is coming back here, it's definitely possible that the Denver Broncos, who are still kind of reeling and uh, trying to find more cap space after uh, the Russell Wilson debacle here, where they have to take on over $80 million dollars and dead cap over the next two years because they released Wilson this past offseason. I do think Sutton is somebody that could be dealt, and if he is on the market, I do think that the Pittsburgh Steelers need to do what they can here to try to get a deal done. He's only 28 years old, and that's not necessarily young, but it's not necessarily like ancient or anything like that. He's a bigger wide receiver at 6'4", 216 pounds. He's a legit red zone threat. Got double-digit touchdowns from Russell Wilson last year, and speaking of Russ, there. He's got established chemistry with Russ, and he would be a very, very good option as the number two wide receiver here with the Pittsburgh Steelers, uh, next to George Pickens, of course, here, who is the legit number one. And Sutton last year, man, pretty darn good season. Uh, didn't get to 1,000 yards receiving, but he did get to double-digit touchdowns. He is somebody that could be a legitimate threat in the red zone for Russell Wilson, who is one of the best red zone quarterbacks in the National Football League in terms of touchdown efficiency efficiency in the red area. And I kind of think that Cortland Sutton would be that missing piece to this Steelers offense right now because I think right now the way that's currently constructed, we talked about it yesterday on the show. Yes, George Pickens is a legit number one in my opinion, but you're kind of relying on a third round rookie in Roman Wilson to be good immediately as your number two option. And then you're relying on either Van Jefferson or Calvin Austin III to really take a massive leap forward as your number three option. But here, if you can get Cortland Sutton, yes, you still have George Pickens, but then you slide Cortland Sutton in there as that legit legit number two wide receiver option that puts less pressure on Roman Wilson to be good immediately uh, and it reduces his role a little bit but that's fine because he is a rookie and then you got Van Jefferson and Calvin Austin the third as nice supplementary depth pieces instead of relying on them as starters heading into the 2024 season so for me personally guys what my initial offer to Denver would be it'd be a fifth round pick in 2025 now a fourth round pick is not doable for the Steelers because of 
the conditions of the Justin Fields trade. If Fields plays a certain amount of snaps this year, you have to give your fourth round pick to Chicago next year. So you can't trade your fourth round pick in 2025. But I think a fifth rounder in 2025 is what I would offer. But if the Broncos need more than that, this is something that I'm also willing to do. I'm willing to part ways with a third round pick if the Steelers can get a fourth round pick back. So you get that pick swap there uh, between third and fourth rounders next season. And then the Steelers end up getting Cortland Sutton on their roster. So for this second trade idea here with the third round and the fourth rounder here, would you accept this trade? Type A if you would accept it or type D if you would decline it. Uh, this is a little bit more than just the fifth round pick that I would prefer to get for Cortland Sutton. But listen, man, at this point in the offseason, the Steelers need to get something done at this number two wide receiver spot. I think I'd be willing to pay this price. Let me know what you guys would do for today's pinned comment. YouTube's going to throw you an ad break here in just a couple of seconds. When that happens, take advantage of that time by let me know if you accept or decline. So now moving on to Justin Fields here, where NFL analyst David Carr says that he believes Justin Fields has a chance to be the Steelers' week one starter for the 2024 season. That's what Carr had to say on NFL Network this week. I think it's a real competition because you don't necessarily know where Justin Fields is at, like where his headspace is. How does he feel coming into this thing? If we get the physical dominant athlete that we've seen with Justin, I really believe he has some untapped potential as far as throwing the football. I think that in this Arthur Smith offense, the ability of Russ, the experience, I don't know it necessarily matters as much as maybe it would somewhere else on other teams. Now coming up here, I'm going to give my thoughts on this dynamic between Russell Wilson and Justin Fields, whether I think there's actually a chance Fields could start week one of the 2024 campaign. But before we get into that, I want to tell you about today's sponsor at Prize Picks. Go to prizepicks.com slash CLNS or download the Prize Picks app today and use our code CLNS for a first time deposit match up to $100. And Prize Picks has specials for new and returning users alike for the NBA playoffs right now. Football season is been over for a while, folks, but it but it won't uh, be back in a while until the fall. Uh, but the action on the hardwood is just heating up right here, just in time for summer with the NBA title on the line. Right now, there's no shortage of high stakes NBA basketball moments this time of the year. So get in on the excitement with our friends at Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app where you can turn your hoops knowledge into serious cash. That is, if you know ball. My Prize Picks projections. For tonight's NBA uh, matchups here, I'm going to take the more on points for Anthony Edwards, who has been fantastic throughout this playoff run. I'm going to take the less on points and uh, assists here on Josh Hart at 17 and a half. And then with Tyrese Halliburton, I'm going to take the more on points for him at 20. Point five in that crucial matchup between the Pacers and the Knicks. The NBA playoffs are now in full force, and you can pick more or less right now to make some money on the biggest stage in the game. Prize picks is simple to play, and all you have to do is pick more than or less than on two to six player stat projections and then watch the winnings roll in. You can get started now if you haven't already at prizepicks.com slash CLNS or download the prize picks app today, and you can get up to $100 in a first deposit match uh, when you use our code CLNS when you either go to the Prize Picks app or their website today. Pick more or pick less. It's that easy with our friends at Prize Picks. So personally, guys, I don't think that the quarterback position, at least right now, is a true competition between Russell Wilson and Justin Fields. I, I think if Russ plays poorly enough, then maybe this could devolve into a true competition. Uh, but it, the way that I'm kind of reading the situation right now, guys, is that the job is Russell Wilson's until he loses it. All right, It's not something where Justin has an equal chance of getting the job. Right now, the Steelers expect Russell Wilson to be their week one starting quarterback and they expect him to be their starting quarterback for the entirety of the 2024 season and the only thing that's going to take him out is if the team isn't succeeding with him at quarterback plain and simply but if this team is winning if Russ is getting this team into the end zone and that's something that I expect him to do and I think he's a really good fit here with Arthur Smith and what this, what this uh, offense is going to be asking from him, I think it's definitely a system that he's going to be able to find some success in. I just don't really see Justin Fields having a legitimate chance to usurp uh, Russell Wilson. It's not impossible, but at this point, I'd say the more likely scenario is Russell Wilson. Uh, it's his job to lose, and I don't think he's going to lose it. And I've been saying this for weeks, guys. I've been saying this since literally the day after they traded for Fields. 
What the Steelers' plan at quarterback is right now is that they want Russ to succeed this year and they want to give him an extension. The Steelers are kind of in a mode right now where they're, they're trying to win a Super Bowl within the next uh, about three to four years, all right? They're trying to maximize Cam Hayward's final years of his NFL career. They're trying to maximize TJ Watt's prime. They're trying to maximize the players that they have in-house right now, and they're hoping Russell Wilson, who's still only 35 years old, is going to be able to come in here with that Super Bowl experience, with that playoff experience, with that uh, top 10 ability in terms of game-winning drives and fourth quarter comebacks in NFL history, one of the most clutch quarterbacks in NFL history. They're hoping that this guy is going to be able to come in and really be their guy for the next four to five years, and they're hoping that he finds success. That's plan A. But they did bring in Justin Fields for that awesome price, right? It was a conditional sixth-round pick as an awesome plan B option. They don't see Justin as the person that's going to be next year's starter necessarily. They don't see him as somebody that's going to replace Russell Wilson this year. That's not their plan. He is their backup plan at this point, where if Russ stinks, the team isn't winning, uh, you know, the, the playoffs are out of the picture, then they go to Justin Fields this year and they see what he can do. But Fields is currently on a one-year contract. If they give Russell Wilson a two- to three-year extension after this year, after a 12, 13, maybe 11-win season and a playoff win, then Justin's going to hit free agency. And if another team offers to give him a starting role elsewhere, he's going to take it. So just so you guys know going into this thing, there is at least a possibility that Justin Fields is never considered the starting quarterback for the Pittsburgh Steelers uh, in the foreseeable future future here, and it's Russell Wilson for the next three to four years with Fields going elsewhere in free agency next year. So predict it for me down there in the comments section. Will Justin Fields replace Russell Wilson in 2024 at some point? It doesn't have to be week one. Just let me know. Do you think Fields replaces Russ sometime this year? And before you answer this question, guys, realize that by answering yes to this question, you are saying the Steelers are going to massively underperform this year with Russell Wilson as their quarterback. So give me a yes or no here. Will Justin Fields replace Russ in 2024? So now let's talk a little bit here about Dante Jackson, who the Steelers reportedly really, really like. And this is something that I've been saying on the show for quite a while. I've been saying it since the trade went down. Because you pretty much traded Deontay Johnson for Dante Jackson straight up earlier this offseason... I mean, that just tells you right there how much the Steelers believe in this guy. And it's very clear that they see him as a legit starter that's going to probably be here for a little bit here. And, and, you know, he's not a super expensive option at this point in time. And as a number two corner, I mean, I can see why they like him as an option. But I think that the Steelers even like him more than I do because, listen, we look at these trade details here where Dante Jackson and Deontay Johnson were essentially traded one for one. Yes, the Steelers got a pick swap that moved them up from a seventh round pick to a sixth round pick, but that's not really all that much in terms of trade value. So they saw Dante Jackson uh, as pretty much just as good of a player as Deontay Johnson is as a wide receiver. And I, I'm, I hate to break it to you guys, man, but Dante Jackson's stats and his, and, his, and, his, uh, and his grading just doesn't really match up with Deontay Johnson's production. So really, the Steelers are really hoping uh, that Dante can play better than what he has throughout his career. Now, he hasn't been necessarily awful, all right? He does uh, have a nose for the football. He does consistently uh, get multiple interceptions every Every single year he does have a couple de decent seasons, but he's been dealing with a lot of injuries. He hasn't had a complete, full, fully healthy season on a very long time here. And you look at the pro football focus grades, um, you know, it's just not the best in the world. You know, uh, he had one season there in 2020 where it was pretty darn good at a 70.4. That was 25th best in the National Football League. But that was the peak, all right? You look at the last three seasons, there hasn't been a grade higher than 65 uh, and that's pretty average. In 2022, he was one of the worst outside corners in football. So I think the Pittsburgh Steelers are kind of putting a lot of faith that Dante Jackson's speed, his instincts, his physicality is really going to work in this system specifically here in Pittsburgh when it really wasn't a fit there with the Carolina Panthers. So you're putting a lot of faith in this guy, especially with very little, uh, very little true depth options here in the cornerback room. Right, you got Corey Trice Jr., who's a big question mark himself. Darius Rush is still very young, barely played last year. Uh, Anthony Averett's been uh, had a bunch of injuries, and you know he's been kind of shaky throughout his. 
career as well. Dante Jackson is still a very, very big question mark for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And even though I think he's a good fit, I'm hopeful for his future here at the Pittsburgh Steelers, it's clear the Steelers view him as somebody that could really come onto the scene and be a really productive player for them. And I think at this point, they're probably putting a lot of faith into that. And as a Steelers fan, I'm hoping that Dante Jackson rewards them and us with an incredible 2024 campaign. So before I go here, there is a rumor floating around out there uh, that the Steelers are going to be playing the Atlanta Falcons in Atlanta week one of the 2024 season. This would be a matchup between Arthur Smith, uh, the former Falcons head coach, and his former squad, and then also Russell Wilson's first game as a Steeler uh, going up against Kirk Cousins, who would be uh, playing in his first game as an Atlanta Falcon. So this would be an interesting matchup. Uh, I've been saying for months, I think it would, I, 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 that I thought it was going to be Steelers Broncos week one at Mile High Stadium with the Russell Wilson return and everything. I do think that that's going to be an eventual Monday night football matchup, Steelers Broncos in Denver. I think the, the NFL is just not going to be able to resist <laughs> that storyline. I think they're going to have to do that at some point. But with uh, the New York Jets and the San Francisco 49ers being slated as the first Monday night football matchup, it looks like that's not going to be the Steelers' destiny here in week one. So make sure you guys click that subscribe button because whenever the Steelers schedule gets released, we're going to have you guys covered with a video right here on Steelers Talk by Chat Sports. So make sure you click that subscribe button right now and join the over 52,000 Yinzers already subscribed to our channel.